Hi and welcome to Reaper TV. In this video we're going to be taking a look at a very popular mixing technique called parallel compression. I'm going to take you through how we do it, how we set it up, why you use it and what you can do with it. So let's take a look at all that now. Now even though we're going to be covering compression in this video, the technique that I'm going to show you can be used for lots of other things. You can apply EQ, you could stack multiple different effects into this particular track, and then the whole point is that you use that track alongside the tracks that are routed through it, and you can mix the two effects together. So if you EQ'd for a specific frequency range, but you didn't want that to be the same on every single track that's routed through it. Instead of creating multiple different EQs, you can control the amount of mix between the original source audio and the affected audio that's on the bus. Now that might sound a bit complicated, but the reality is it's very, very simple. And I'll show you how that works through a couple of different methods with using compression in this example. So let's take a look at how we set things up first of all. So in this video, we're going to concentrate on just applying this effect to the kick drum, but you're not limited to just one track going through it. So first thing we need to do is create that parallel compression track. That's just an ordinary track. We can just click, create a new blank track ready, just expand that out. And what I need to do is route the kick drum in this instance through this track. So we can do that very easily in Reaper. If we take a look at either the mixer control panel down the bottom or the track control panel on the left, you can see we've got the IO button and you can see everything is set up with master and you know, it's just your routing, simple routing. So all we need to do is grab the track that we want, which in this instance is the kick. So I'm gonna come up, grab the IO button, drag that down and you can see we get a little jack symbol appear next to it. I'm gonna bring that down and I'm gonna drop that over the compression track, the parallel compression track. And there we go, we've now set up our send. So that's sending all the signal that's gonna come through the kick track and route that down through the compression track, which just for now, let's just name that. So we're gonna call this kick compression. So we've named that. So we now know what's going through there. So if I just open up the IO again, so we can take a look at that. You can see we have a couple of controls available to us. If we look at the receive from track 12, in this instance kicks, we've got a whole range of different things we can do. At the moment, this is set to be post fader, post pan, but we've got pre fader, post effects and pre effects. So you can control what signal is coming through to this parallel compression track. So you can have it if you're dealing with real kick drums, for example, not like I am at the moment, which is sampled through Easy Drummer. You can specify that before any EQ or any compression or anything else you apply to, for example, the whole drum track or the individual kick track, you can control whether that's being applied through this compression track as well or being ignored by it. So you can control all of that information by using these three different options. We can also control if it's going to be panned left or right or a combination of. We can also control the amount of signal that comes through to this. So say, for example, you were routing your kick drum, your snare drum, and all your toms through this, you may want to apply more compression to the kick drum than you do to the snare or toms. You can use that to control the amount of volume or the amount of original signal that's coming through that, that track. So it might sound, like I say, it might sound a bit confusing, but it's, it's fairly simple. Once you start to adjust that, if you have multiple sends going through, then you'll see exactly what I mean. You're just controlling the amount of mix that's been applied. So we'll leave everything as it is there. And we now have this track. So I've soloed every, oh, I've muted everything bar the drum track. And I'm going to just mute everything on there a second, except for the kick. So let's just mute all that. And we'll mute those. And then we'll just unmute the kick. So if we take a look now, we'll see, if we look at the track at the end, which is our compression track, we'll see the signal will show up in there when we play this back. And we're only going to listen to the kick drum. So let's just hit play on that. So as you saw there, the compression track is now showing a signal from our kick track. So we now know we've got our routing set up correctly. So what we can do next is we can now go through and compress that track. So let's open up a copy of Finality. I'm going to use this as my compressor of choice. 
So what I'm going to do is compress the living daylights out of this track, this specific compression track. Now this is more than I would probably do and it's just to, to sort of demonstrate exactly what's going on. So I'm going to solo that out and then we're going to dial in some, some serious compression on this now. So let's go through that. So now we've compressed the sidechain compression track, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with just the kick, the natural kick on its own, and then I'm going to slowly bring in the compression track to show you how that fattens the kick drum up and how we can control the amount of the compressed track that's being mixed with the original source track. So I'll just start the track up and I'll show you that just by bringing in the compressed, the sidechain compressed track alongside the original source. So as you can see, you can mix the two together to get a much fuller sound. But like I said at the top of the video, you're not limited to only using a compressor. Even though this is called sidechain compression, it's not limited to only being used with a compressor. So to show you an example, I've applied an over-the-top EQ to accentuate the top end and the bottom end of the kick drum to give it a bit more click and a bit more boom. And I'm going to show you that EQ being applied. We'll turn that on and off, and then I'll show you how you can mix that through to control the amount of that that goes through alongside the compression. So Let's close this down a second. Let's open up the EQ so I can show you what I've done. As you can see, I boosted the low end frequency. I've given it a boost around the 50k, uh, sorry, the 50 hertz mark. And we've also given it a boost around the 2.7k mark. These are probably over the top compared to what I'd normally do, but I'll AB it and just show you what that's doing. So I'm just gonna only show you the side chain track on its own. So you can only hear the EQ and the, um, the compressor have been applied to it. So let's just engage that. And then let me just run that on play a second so you can have a listen. As you can see, that really does accentuate the low end and the click of the, the kick drum. So. Let's mix those two together with the EQ in place and I'll show you then how that fills the drum out even more so than just the compressor. It's not a massive difference, but it's noticeable. And you'll find that when you start to do this on a whole track and you pick out those particular instruments or parts of a drum kit, for example, that don't necessarily come through in the mix, this is a great way of being able to control exactly how much of that signal is being brought back in. And then you can mix it to taste or listen to it and see how much of that you need to bring back in with the mix. So finally, just to wrap up, I'm going to close all these down and I'm going to put all the drums back together so we've got the entire drum kit and I'm going to bring that up and down to show you how that changes the kick drum sound as part of the whole percussive kit.
Okay, so there we have it. Now, hopefully you could hear the difference there where we start to introduce the sidechain compression track back in and we adjust the mix between the compressed track with the EQ applied to it and the original source just to get those balanced. But hopefully what you could also hear is the fact that the kick drum started to come forward in the mix because we'd added that extra low end and high end in there just to give it a bit more punch and clarity as part of the whole drum kit. Now, while this is a fairly advanced topic for mixing, it's something that once you get your head around it, it's very, very useful to have in the back pocket should you need to adjust an individual instrument or where you want to route multiple instruments through a similar compression, but you want to apply a level of control on how much of that is being applied to any one of those individual ones, individual elements, to give you a lot of fine-grained balance over your sound. Like I say, hopefully what you could hear in there is that the kick drum started to come forward and it actually made its presence much more felt than it did without the compression and the EQ applied to it. Well, I hope you found this video useful. I hope it's a technique you're going to find you can use in your mixes. If you've got any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else we cover on the channel, pop those in the comment section below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of the new content we add every single week on the channel. Well, until next time, happy mixing.